When I was a kid, I used to stay in front of my apartment building in Kiev, and I would look up into the sky, and I would count the birds, because I envy them. They would fly so free, so elegant, just not understanding borders, not understanding the military guards telling them where they can or couldn't go. Kind of their dance in the wind was amazing. It was like a vault. And I connected with these birds because I, just like them, had no fear of flying until that night. My name is Sergei Volodin. In 1976, I accomplished my life goal and I joined the Soviet Air Force Base in Kiev as a helicopter pilot. I had a quiet post. I would fly uh, bureaucrats and generals around the Soviet Union in my M8 uh, helicopter, equipped with a bar, with a toilet, with, with even sofas. Uh, but honestly, I liked it because it allowed me to do what I really wanted. And that was to fly, because I had no fear of flying. April the 26th, 1986, we get the call. As Kiev Air Force Rescue, we were called to Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Something had gone wrong. An explosion, fire, people hurt. My helicopter was the first to arrive at the scene. And while the government was forming a commission to assess the disaster, I was supposed to fly an army major around Pripyat to measure the radiation in the city. It was a cloudless day, and we just wore short sleeve shirts. We really didn't know what we were getting into. And as we took off, I observed people on the ground working in their gardens quite peacefully, like any other day. But the metallic taste in my mouth told me something was wrong. When I looked up at my cockpit dosimeter, the needle was off the scale. I flipped the settings, 10, 25, 50, 200, 500 rongens per hour. But the needle still stayed there. After 500, the equipment and people in general aren't supposed to be able to function. At the same time, the major burst into the cockpit with his own handheld dosimeter looking at me and yelling, you murderer, you've killed us all. We got so much radiation that day that he thought we were surely dead. After a day of flying, my unit was sent to hospital number six in Moscow. And we were told we were too irradiated to be able to fly. That we only had a month to live and to drink as much vodka as we could. <laughs> but I was Sergei, I was part of the Soviet army and I couldn't take no for an answer. So after a month I recovered. I went back to the zone and I flew my helicopter for the next six months together with my brother liquidators to fight this invisible enemy. Because it was not just longer a mission, but we were there to save Russia, to save the Soviet Union, to save the world from this invisible enemy that was eating our souls. We would clean houses from the radiation. We would burn down the houses that we couldn't clean. We would evacuate people and we would kill the animals. We even built a sarcophagus around the remains of what used to be reactor number four. All together, people from all parts of the Soviet Union came together to fight voluntarily against the enemy. It was hard. It hurt us all. We all got a mouth dose of radiation. People died there. People died years later. Those who didn't die had to suffer their whole lives, and those who couldn't take the suffering took their own lives. But we still stand here proudly because we fought the war, we fought and we won. We showed the world that we were soldiers, we took an oath, we could fight, and we did fight, because if it not for us, who would have done this fight? In 1991, I took a desk job. I was 
no longer fine. I also had a sickness, as my other comrades did, but my sickness was different, because now I was afraid of flying.